Live, the news on NBC6 starts now. We just got information from Miami-Dade police that there was one female victim in critical condition and also a male victim that was pronounced dead. We also have live images of our NBC6 helicopter over the scene here where we can see that Miami-Dade police continue to investigate. They are in their preliminary investigation. Yellow tape is blocking off several intersections. A tragic story this morning. Miami police and fire rescue still remain here on scene investigating this deadly fire this morning. We learned moments ago that elderly man that was pulled out from the home during the fire was transported to Jackson Memorial Trauma Center and died. This after 2 a.m. City of Miami Fire Rescue responded to multiple calls of a house fire located on 2320 Southwest 4th Street. Now upon arrival, they found the single residential property with heavy smoke and flames coming out from the rear of the home. I'm near Northwest 29th Avenue and 51st Terrace. Police alerted by shot spotter overnight. Chopper 6 over the scene where police confirmed around 1 a.m. A woman and man were shot and killed inside a gray BMW. That BMW crashing into a fence. It all appears to be by a drive-by shooting from another vehicle. The woman died on scene while the man died at Jackson Memorial Hospital. According to Miami police, the pedestrian was struck here at the intersection of Southwest 8th Avenue and 7th Street here in Little Havana while crossing the street. Now they released a new information today on the car they are looking for. We need the help of finding whoever did this. We're looking for a white Maserati Levante and it should have front end damage and windshield damage. The cell phone video shows moments after a pedestrian was struck by that fleeing vehicle. Police say today they are looking for and that was involved in a hit and run crash in Little Havana. Here we'll be able to find all those essential items that you and your family will need in prep of the hurricane season that starts June 1st. We're actually here with the sales manager, Hanser Gazmuri. Now, if you can talk to us a little bit of why is it so important for people to prep starting today? Yes, ma'am. Starting today, ending Sunday, June 3rd, we are having sales tax exempt on essential items uh, from gas tanks, flashlights, batteries, generators, everything that you need, basically, in case of an emergency. The winds were picking up and it was the rain was very, very heavy. Now, earlier on our live shot, we were able to actually go on the beach. It officially has been closed. We did see a couple people earlier that were hopping the gate, trying to get some pictures, trying to get um, some sense of the feeling of, of this tropical storm. The winds have picked up immensely. Also, we see that all of the beach houses, lifeguard houses have already put up the two red flags, alerting people that they should not be in this area. It has been raining nonstop in this area of Little Haiti. Also, this is exactly the house that got impacted last night. As you can see, one of the big branches had a fall owner or half of the half of the tree had snapped and fell on top of this house here, causing two families to actually be displaced. A total of seven people, including a nine year old child that one of the ceiling fans from one of the rooms had fell on him. Luckily, he only had minor injuries. We're here in the St. Joseph Catholic Church. We have uh, jo joined here by Pastor Juan Sosa. If you can just tell us a little bit about what is expected to go on this morning. It's our daily mass because right at this time, the more important thing is to pray for not only for hope, but also to pray for the strength of those who are really working very hard on the search and rescue teams and, and the many who are helping out at the center here in Surfside. Uh, we are, we have 12 families that live in that building and 10 of them are unaccounted for. Plus the many who used to come on weekends uh, from other parts of Miami to uh, worship with us, to be with us. And so we're very uh, touched by the whole idea that the whole community is being bound together and that we're going to pray this. The Family Assistance Center has now been moved up the street at the Seaview Hotel in Ball Harbor. Now 11 people confirmed dead since yesterday while families continue 
continue to patiently wait. During a meeting yesterday held with survivors and families that continue to be displaced, they were informed that if they owned or leased any of the units in Champlain Tower South, they will receive $10,000 for relocation. This according to a state senator. While the focus from the Surfside condo collapse continues to be on search and recovery, State Senator James Peasel says there's also an overwhelming feeling of survivors' guilt. That's why he held a meeting last night with survivors and families of the Champlain Tower collapse who are now displaced and worried about how they're going to rebuild their lives. Residents of Crestview Towers here in North Miami Beach will be allowed into the building only for 15 minutes to get their most essential items. This will happen between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. today. One member of each family will be allowed to return to their apartment with a police escort for 15 minutes into the already deemed unsafe apartment building so they can gather essential items. Today marks a week since everyone was forced out of the Crestview Towers due to structural concerns. I want to show you guys that this is an example here in Durrell on Northwest 53rd Street. These streets here have helped restaurants expand their outdoor seating in order to keep customers and at the same time follow CDC safety guidelines during the pandemic. It was an unexpected announcement from Superintendent Robert Runcie as he said he would be considering to step down from the job. Many members of the community have showed his support. However, some school committee members have admitted that it would be difficult for him to continue to do his duties. For those who are still interested in getting the single dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, they will have to sign an updated consent form as well. They will be handed out a fact sheet with updated any information and associated with rare blood clots. Now, the Florida Department of Health has issued an updated COVID-19 vaccine screening and consent form. One of the new questions is, are you a female age 18 to 49 years old receiving the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine? The two-dose vaccine will be available for airport employees, family and friends, as well as Florida residents who are looking to get their COVID shot before travel. The Pfizer vaccines will be administered here at the Miami International Airport until this Friday, May 14th, and then will continue for a second round on June 1st through the 4th, and lastly on June 7th. We're back with a heartwarming story out of Miami Lakes, where tonight a homeless man is enjoying the company of his dog again after the pup was stolen several days ago. And that reunion you see right there was made possible by local residents who shared his story all over social media. NBC6 reporter Carolina Peguero has the story. His five-year-old pup Sky Dim was uh, dropped off by an unknown person late last night, and Pedro says he couldn't be happier that he's once reunited with his uh, puppy. Now, members of the community continue to show their support. Pedro's Dimas Carrion says he hasn't been able to stop crying since last night when his Chihuahua mix perrito Sky Dim miraculously appeared after being stolen and snatched from him just Tuesday morning. It's like when someone loses their child and finds them. My life has been bad since then, and this has not been the first time that it has happened. Five days later, he's here with me again. I'm super happy. I mean, he's been he's he's been devastated without the dog, and he takes really really good care of the dog. I mean. He takes care, better care of the dog than himself. According to the 72-year-old man that has lived near Northwest 67th Street in the Palmetto for several years, an unknown person dropped Sky Dim next to him and ran away, and he didn't get to see their face. But he says he just is thankful for those in the community who have spread the word on social media and stopped by today to show him their unconditional support like Sandy Feliz. Dog thing going on. He hasn't been able to get some money because he hasn't been able to ask around. So we came out to give him some help and support. So like that, you know, he has a hot plate of food as well, just like the rest of us. And overjoyed with overwhelming support from the community, Pedro only sends out his appreciation for those who know him and have helped him reunite with his best friend. Thank you because you made me not feel alone, and now I know justice and love do exist.
And although Pedro continues to live here on Northwest 67th Street, he says that, that he has kept up to date with the caring of his perrito Sky Dim with all his vaccinations, while members of the community say that their next mission is to find them a safe home. I'm in Miami Lakes, Carolina Pagaro, NBC6 News. While police continue to search for the suspects of this shooting, we can see that at least one bullet hole made it through the window of this banquet hall hookah in this morning we're learning more about those who died including a corrections officer and a father rip's lighting up on facebook for tylisha taylor these are pictures of the 20 year old confirmed and provided by the man who took them taylor shot and killed in sunday morning's mass shooting she was a corrections officer who started her public safety career in january 2020. the florida department of corrections said we are devastated to learn a member of our fdc family officer taylor was killed in a fatal shooting our prayers are with her family as they navigate this unimaginable loss Outside the hospital where some of the victims ended up, family and friends hug each other tightly, their weeps heard across the parking lot. A sound the commissioner who represents this area says no family should have to make or hear. This weekend, you know, what was horrific in terms of we have a graduation and now we're, we're talking to families about the death of their children at what should have been a celebration. In a tweet, Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Cava wrote, I'm horrified by this tragedy and heartbroken for the loved ones of those we lost. We will not allow a small group of violent actors to terrorize our community. We must protect the safety and well-being of all Miami-Dade families and swiftly bring all those responsible to justice. Now, police have yet to identify the victims or the deceased men, possibly an 18-year-old, the other a 23- or 24-year-old who have has a small child. Police are asking for the community's help if they know any information about this incident to call Miami Dade Crime Stoppers at 305 471 TIPS. Reporting in Southwest Miami Dade, Carolina Pagaro, NBC6 News. First Lady Martine Moise is still here recovering at Ryder Trauma Center at Jackson Memorial Hospital where she was rushed by a U.S. envoy. We also know that the investigation of her husband's assassination nation is still underway. Four people suspected of killing Haiti's president, 53-year-old Jovenel Moise, were fatally shot by police and two others were arrested. The assassination happened overnight Wednesday inside Moise's home. The gunmen were reportedly speaking English and Spanish, yelling they were DEA agents. But the Haitian government says they were mercenaries who killed Moise and injured his wife. The Haitian ambassador to the U.S. confirmed Martine Moise, 47, is in Miami for treatment. Our cameras rolled as she was transported under police escort to Ryder Trauma Center. The ambassador is now calling for an international investigation. Unfortunately, we have a, a dead president. Uh, he, he was killed. Uh, now we need to, to make sure that uh, his legacy carries on and, then, and to see how we can uh, we consider uh, the country together. While President Biden says the State Department is ready to provide assistance, the UN Security Council is expected to meet later today. And we know at this hour, the First Lady still remains in critical condition, but stable. We hope to get more information as the day goes on. And we do know that that meeting is also expected to happen, as well as local officials and local congressmen are expected to meet with the Haitian community later this afternoon. Reporting live at Jackson Memorial Hospital, Carolina Pagaro, NBC6 News.